Welcome to Recharge with Richardson, five minutes of hope and inspiration every Monday and Thursday. And now, here is today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to Recharge with Richardson. The topic we're going to be talking about today very quickly is something that I think at least I can really relate to this year. Um, the title would be Worrying Does Not Equal a Better Life. Now, before you start assuming how this is going to be talked about, I want to let you know that I have struggled with depression um, this year specifically uh, after everything that's been going on. So I, I do understand at least a little bit about how it feels, and I do understand that it's not something that you can just flip a light switch and suddenly, oh, hey, no, I'm no longer depressed. So I understand it's a real journey and a real battle. So I want to let you know I'm coming from that place as we talk about this together. So uh, as you probably can guess, we're going to be diving into Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus is in the middle of his Sermon on the Mount, and he talks about being anxious and about being worried. So the verses we're going to be reading specifically are verses 25 through 27 and verses 32 through 34. So the first verses say this, Therefore I tell you, this is Jesus talking, Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? In the final verse of this section, verse 27, And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his or her span of life? Oh, that last verse um, really hurts. And let's be honest, when we read passages like this coming from a real place of um, anxiety and depression, it seems like these verses aren't really being true to how we feel. And what I mean by that is it seems like it's not taking it seriously. But I think we should give Jesus enough credit to try to understand what he's saying here and apply it rather than saying, oh, that doesn't make sense with my reality. I know that it's not a fix like that. But I I just want to clarify that the original word here in the Greek can be translated as anxiety. It can be translated as anxious. But I think maybe a a little more accurate translation could be worry. Do not worry. And you'll see that in King James, New King James Version. And the reason I specify and zero in on that translation of the word, it seems like semantics, but The context of this passage, and when Jesus talks about this in Luke chapter 12, worry is tied into instructions about parables for rich people who have made wealth in material things their God. Not that there is anything wrong with being wealthy, but if it's your God and you're obsessed with getting more, this is the kind of worry that Jesus is talking about. This is the context in which Jesus says, do not worry. So the primary sense of what Jesus is saying here is that the worry, or do not worry, as Jesus is saying, is for the well-off in Jesus' time. It's not as the Andrew Study Bible study notes say. I'm just going to quote it because it's so good. It is not for those who don't have as much as for those who are not satisfied. Okay. So chew on that a little bit as we read the final verses of this section, verses 32 through 34. I'll just say that last line of the quote again. It is not for those who do not have as much as for those who are not satisfied. All right, we pick up in verse 32. For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them all. But seek first. This is the punchline. Hear this. If you don't hear anything else, this is the punchline that Jesus is driving at. But seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, or do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So after thinking about what we talked about when we first started reading this, that it seems like Jesus doesn't know 
what it feels like to be depressed, what it feels like to have that anxiety that you can't just turn off. But then you realize what he's getting at once you finish this passage. And oh my goodness, context and reading the entire passage would solve so many biblical problems that we cause amongst ourselves whenever we read scripture. But that's a totally different topic that goes outside of the purpose of this video. Anyway, looking at the end of this, we see that Jesus knows exactly where he's going when he starts talking about do not worry. He's saying... Did you see it? In verse 33, he says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And as you know, in the Bible, righteousness can mean justice. And this would be in the context of the first century, people that were slaves, people that were oppressed. That's what Jesus was talking about. We can pretty easily extrapolate that today. Seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, his righteousness. And this is the beauty. And all these things will be added to you. Okay, it's not an easy thing. You know, going on a tangent here, uh, bef while this is being recorded, the vice presidential debate has not finished. So thinking about that debate has me anxious. It has me worried. Not as worried and anxious as the presidential debate because of the way that that went. I had anxiety. I was worried. But do you see what God is saying here? Seek first the kingdom of God and then worry about these things. Seek first the kingdom of God, worry about what you're going to eat. Seek first the kingdom of God, worry about today. So God is saying these things that you're that you're thinking about are tangible. These things that you're thinking thinking thinking, sorry, excuse me, thinking about that you need such as your clothing, they're important. God says those are things worth thinking about, but they're not worth being the primary thing. It's worthy to try to sate your hunger when you're hungry and you need to eat, of course. But if that's your primary goal in life, to sate your hunger, you're not going to live a fulfilling life. If your primary goal is to not be anxious when you watch a debate, you're not going to be fulfilled in life. God is trying to give us an abundant life by making his kingdom, by making the reconciliation that his presence brings the primary thing in our life. Then all of these other things will be added. It's not a quick fix. It's a journey. Jesus is saying, if you seek the kingdom of God, all of these other things will be in the correct place, within the correct focus in your life. Let me say a quick prayer for you. Dear God, this is a time where worry is abundant. This is a time where we have so many things we're thinking about, but God, we put those things in your hands. We acknowledge that your kingdom is primary, that seeking your face is, is more important than seeking the things that you can do for us. Because God, you already want to do those things for us. So I ask that whoever's watching this today, that they are able to seek you genuinely and that you fill them with joy, with wonder in the midst of the waiting for these other things that are important, but not the most important. I know that you'll do this because we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Recharge with Richardson. Don't forget to join us for our next episode. And until then, may God fill you with joy and peace and hope.